Hello, my name is Phil Riley. On behalf of the Fairfield Glade Community Club Board of Directors and their appointed elections committee, I'd like to welcome you to the 2020 Board of Directors Election Candidates Forum. Your election committee is presenting the forum in this format to comply with COVID-19 guidelines for social distancing and large gatherings. It is designed to offer you an opportunity to learn more about the six candidates for election to the two property owner at-large director positions on the Fairfield Glade Community Club Board of Directors so that you can make an informed decision regarding which candidate deserves your support and, more importantly, your vote. The forum supplements already published information available in the print media and on the Community Club's website. Your election committee is appointed by the Board of Directors to be responsible for overseeing the conduct of the election of directors in accordance with Fairfield Glades covenants and restrictions. The members of the committee this year are Pat Vincent, our chairperson, Don Spielvogel, Dennis Monson, Jean Geib, Stephen Crane, Bill Booth, Monica Heisel, and myself. I can't fail to mention Pat Davis, our staff liaison, and Ken Fleerl, our board liaison. They help us and support us in every way. We are fortunate to have multiple candidates seeking two director at large positions. Donald Elliott, Gary Fitch, Bruce Horn, Greg Jones, Jerry Miller, and John Wedgworth. Their order of appearance in this program is determined in a drawing by the candidates prior to the commencement. Each candidate will be allowed two minutes to make their opening remarks. We'll begin with Bruce Horn. Good morning. My name is Bruce Horn. Among other things, I am a Navy veteran and served in Vietnam. I moved here almost 14 years ago. Shortly after we built our house here, I lost my wife. I almost left at that time, but the support I received here, I knew that this would be my community for life. I stayed, and four years later, I was exceedingly fortunate to meet my wonderful wife, Mary Jane. Our anniversary is in October. I got involved here with FIGNWIC Neighborhood Watch Coalition and developed and deployed our first website and database. Over nine years, I've held various roles from board member technical officer, and now I am coordinator of our Rotherham group. I have volunteered here at Avalon and Second Chance, delivered meals for the church, joined Rotary and became the 2014-2015 president, created the Fairfield Glade Rotary Foundation, a 501c3, and became the first president, and have been active in Music and Memory, FGRS, and Good Samaritans. Through Rotary, I have been involved in furthering the education possibilities of our youth, Links, and Starts, Lonely Instruments Needing Kids, and Starts, which is the Support Arts Program. Created scholarships to adults seeking a better life, and local students wishing to further their education. I have served on the Racket Sports Advisory Committee to the Board of Directors, both as a member and a chair. Our community should include Crossville, Cumberland County, and Wyndham. All those things we want for our community apply to our partners. It gets done better and faster when we listen to each other and work together. After all, this is our community, one community. Thank you. Thank you, Bruce. Next up is Greg Jones. Greg? My name is Greg Jones, and I want to be elected as your at-large board member. My wife, Christine, and I have been Fairfield Glade residents since May of 2015 and thoroughly enjoy living in our wonderful community. I am recently retired, so I have not been deeply involved in the Fairfield Glade governance in the past. I do not see that lack of experience as a negative. Rather, I believe I'm uniquely qualified based on the skills I have developed from my strong business and consulting backgrounds. Over the past several weeks, I've had the opportunity to talk to property owners, employees, visitors, board members, and leaders of organizations providing amenities and services here at Fairfield Glade. I've learned a lot from those conversations. Fairfield Glade is truly a complex business. 
We have multiple ways we fund, operate, and provide oversight for organizations and amenities. One of the key observations from my recent discussions is that planning, priority setting, and allocation of financial resources need to be more tightly integrated across all organizations. If Fairfield Glade is to achieve its singular vision, this needs to be addressed. This is hard work and takes a significant time commitment. I know because it's exactly what I've done successfully over the last 30 years of my career over multiple businesses and organizations. It requires people to be able to see the big picture, act for the overall good of Fairfield Glade, know how to get all the right people in a room to set priorities, and really to listen and work together in a collaborative manner. Leaving individual agendas behind, Critical personnel skills include strategic thinking, strong financial knowledge, ability to think out of the box so that alternative solutions can be developed, evaluated and acted upon, honest open communication, and the ability to manage change. My only agenda is to help us fulfill our vision statement. I am committed to doing the hard work and investing the necessary time to make that happen. I appreciate your consideration. You cast a vote for me. And if you'd like to know more about me, please go to my website. Thank you, Greg. Next up is John Wedgworth. Um, hello, my name is John Wedgworth, and I'm a candidate for the 2020 Fairfield Glade Board of Directors. My wife, Beth, and I live at 16 West Ridge Terrace. And when we moved here in February of 2017, one of the first commitments I made was to become engaged in our community. And there was different ways to become engaged. The way I chose was to become a committee member. And for the last two years, I've been president of uh, chairperson of the Property Standards Committee. This experience has provided me an opportunity for active engagement with the community, with the Fairfield Glade Board of Directors, and with the working with the general manager. I'm continually amazed at the level of volunteer dedication from all committees and fellow residents who serve on the various committees here and their determination to make Fairfield Glade a great place to live. This year, I had the opportunity to become president of Fairfield uh, Positively Glade. In our group, we spread the word about Fairfield Glade's natural beauty, outstanding amenities, and the vibrant lifestyle. These leadership roles have prepared me to be on the Fairfield Glade Board of Directors. In addition, my 25 years of making that corporation and sales manager would be a strong asset for both the financial and the marketing aspects of the Fairfield Glade Board of Directors work. This relevant experience would allow me to hit the ground running as a board member from day one. I can promise you my personal demeanor is one of calm. I'm a communicator and a bridge builder who listens before speaking. Thank you, and I would appreciate your vote. Thank you, John. Next, we'll hear from Donald Elliott. Don? Hello. My name is Don Elliott, and I'm a candidate for the Fairfield Glade Board of Directors. After graduating from high school in 1965, I enlisted in the United States Navy, retiring in 1985. After my retirement from the Navy, I attended Southern Illinois University from 1985 to 1988, earned a BS and MS in education. I worked for the Navy at Great Lakes teaching weapon systems fundamentals. In 1993, I took on the challenge of training coordinator at Abbott Labs in North Chicago, Illinois. Over a two-year period, I analyzed, designed, developed, implemented, and evaluated a training plan for a 150-person maintenance department. In 1995, I accepted a position as a public school teacher at an alternative school in Waukegan, Illinois. I retired from public education in 2009 as department chair for the industrial and business departments at Waukegan High School. From 2011 to 2015, I served on the Board of Education for the Waukegan School District. During my tenure on the board, we oversaw a $38 million capital development project involving 14 schools in our district. We finished on time and under budget. Currently, I'm the treasurer for the Fairfield Glade Rotary Foundation and have been a member for two years. I'm the president of the USS Chicago Reunion Committee and vice president of scholarships for the Little Rock Association. My wife and I are also members of the Plateau Corvette Club. My wife, Dee, and I purchased two lots in Fairfield Glade in 2004 a condo in 2016, and a house in 2018. We are also Wyndham Timeshare owners. Dan and I both thoroughly enjoy our Fairfield Glade family and friends. Thank you. Thank you, Don. Our next speaker will be Jerry Miller. Jerry? 
Good evening, everyone. Friends have asked me, why are you running for the board after devoting so much time to this community over a 15-year span and the ripe old age of 88 to boot? I tell them that's exactly why I'm running. I don't have a single health issue, and my energy level is high. It's my last chance to make a real difference by giving the property owners a meaningful voice in the development of this great community. Every year, candidates make promises of transparency. They promise to listen. They promise to be responsive. Then once elected, they seem to fold right in, and the opposite seems to happen. As some say, they drink the Kool-Aid, and it's over. That will not happen to me. That's a promise of me to you. It's a promise I pledge to keep. I have seen so many good people with significant expertise step up <laughs> great ideas and recommendations. They are generally ignored by our leaders. Even worse, sometimes even mocked. They finally give up and quit trying. Valuable assets lost. Email blasts, including more publications such as Across the Board and Magnified, are, are informational and appreciated. But publications talk to us, not with us. Publications don't hear us. Publications don't listen to us. Publications don't respond to feedback from us. And of course, there is all a too big problem of no response at all to issues of concern. That's avoidance, which builds resentment and frustration. We need to trust our leadership. We need to believe in them. This comes best with two-way communications and honest dialogue. If elected, I will be your unwavering advocate. I insist that you hold me accountable in that role. I want and need your vote. I want the opportunity to make a difference. Thank you. Last up is Gary Fitch. Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, I want to talk a little bit, uh, tell you about my qualifications and why I'm running. Um, I have a bachelor's degree in accounting. I also have a master's degree in database design and artificial intelligence, and I'm a CPA. Um, I have worked as a division controller of a, of a division of a large multinational, multi-billion dollar company. I have been the product manager for three software companies. And most recently, I was senior partner of a consulting firm. So I've had a lot of experience in business. Um, my wife and I moved down here almost six years ago now. And almost immediately after I moved down here, the board formed the Financial Advisory Committee. So I thought that I would put my expertise and knowledge to, the, to use that for the benefit of the community. And I volunteered to join that committee. And I have been a member of the Financial Advisory Committee ever since then. Uh, I also work on the trails crew. I volunteered for Habitat for Humanity. Uh, I sing in a local church choir. I also sing in a group called Master Singers over in Cookville. I'm a duplicate bridge player, and I play golf in my spare time. <laughs> um, what I want to talk about particularly is the Financial Advisory Committee. In the five years that I have been on that committee, um, it has given me a very intimate view of how this community is run. And the problem that I see is in the capital expenditures area. Basically, we don't do a very good job of planning those expenditures in many cases. Um, we have major expenditures coming up, and we need to do a better job of planning and preparing for those changes. So I would appreciate your vote. I am con convinced that I can help in that endeavor. Thank you. Questions have been prepared for the candidates by the election committee based on community current events and suggestions received from Fairfield Glade Community Club members. This year we received more questions than time allows. The committee carefully reviewed all the questions submitted eliminating duplicates and combining similar questions so that most, if not all, submitters should recognize their information. Questions have been randomly selected by the candidates, and they have not seen them prior to this program. Each candidate will be allowed two minutes to respond to the question. We will start with Bruce Horn. Your question is, as a board member, what would be your position on the distribution of the VISTA on community club premises? This is a question that uh, has been debated uh, in and out of the board and by the community. I personally would like to see it 
on the premises. That's a personal opinion, and I would get a vote on that. However, because this is a representative community and the board, I would go along with the vote of the board. I don't have to agree with everything that is brought up. I don't have to approve of it, but I have to have a voice and state my viewpoint and my um, desires for something to happen in the community. I try to look at everything at a level that includes everybody that is involved in the community. The board has to take into consideration information that at this point I don't have either. That's part of the reason I want to run for the board and be there to be part of that conversation and to make my own decisions based on what the input I receive from our constituents, the people that literally hired us to be on the board. I think it would be uh, wrong to have a limited distribution of information for the community. I think it's always best to have those dialogues and those debates based on information and opinions. Then we can debate, we can talk about it, and ultimately vote. We will come to a consensus. We'll find out what that is as we continue the dialogue. Thank you, Bruce. The next question is for Greg Jones. Greg, would you support a solicitation for resident opinions on the need to expand the sidewalk network? The short answer is yes. I think it's important that we go out to our community and find out what the priorities are from our own residents and for people that are involved in the community. Uh, in terms of setting any kind of agenda, though, for solicitations or for as, that, as far as that goes, setting those priorities, that's a bigger or a larger conversation I believe we need to have. So anyone wanting to get some solicitation in terms of how to approach things like uh, expanding the, the sidewalk network or any other priorities here at Fairfield Glade, I'm more than willing to work with, and I would truly, truly appreciate the inputs. And then we would take those up in terms of a process on how to set those priorities, getting all the right people in the room, looking at all the options, and really trying to look at what the alternatives really are. I think that that's been a failing that, that the board has, that I've seen in the board in the past is that we really don't look at all the alternatives that there are to either fund or to do certain activities, and we need to do more of that. So the quick answer is yes, and uh, a lot more to come in terms of how we put that in the priority mix. Thank you. Thank you, Greg. The next question goes to John Wedgworth. John, if you could change one covenant or restriction, what would it be and why? The last two years as the chairperson of the Property Standards Committee, we sometimes are asked that question. Um, I don't feel the need that the covenants and restrictions needs to be changed. However, the process to do a review of it is always necessary. Um, we have so many policies now that, that the board has approved, and they're all on our website for you to view. Um, and the covenant restrictions have served us well over the many years. Obviously, like I said, it should be reviewed, and that would be one of my priorities on the board is to review them. But as for, for making a certain particular change, now I'm not in favor of that at this time. Thank you. Thank you, John. The next question goes to Donald Elliott. Don? What do you consider your two strongest experience qualifications that you will bring to the board if elected? Thank you. Uh, during my working career, I've always been uh, up for the challenge. I don't mind taking a challenge. That's why I'm running for the Fairfield Glade Board of Directors. I do uh, think that uh, one of my strongest attributes is my ability to listen, uh, think about uh, what has been said, collaborate with the other board members, listen to them also, and working with them, uh, come up with a solution or an alternative to the suggestion that has been made. The other one is my perseverance. I was the first one in my family to obtain a college education. I've always worked really hard. I've done things that were not easy. A 20-year Navy career. I went to college after I 
retired from the Navy for two and a half years every other weekend, did not miss a weekend. I'm committed here to doing what I say I'm going to do. Thank you. Thank you, Don. The next question goes to Jerry Miller. Jerry, as a board member, what would you do to increase property owner voting in our elections? When we have just 50% of our residents casting votes for their lots, and about 12% of non-residents doing the same, we have a terrible representation of our voting records here. <clears throat> I remember at a workshop when Bruce Cox, a present board member, said about a year ago that we should be at 80 or 90%. He doesn't understand why we cannot vote more than a 50% rate. That has allowed many things to happen, including sometimes the Wyndham control of our elections. We just have to get the numbers up. I think that the board has to take an active role because after Bruce said that, the board did nothing really. We have to be a 12-month job of trying to improve the voting, tell, tell people what the repercussions of not voting are for determination of our elections, and they should just do it. I think we just have to build the awareness of caring in the outcome of our elections and determining our own course. Thank you. Thank you, Jerry. The, uh, the next question goes to Gary Fitch. Gary, as a board member, what would be your position on barring the general public from regular meetings of the Strategic Planning Committee? Uh, this is a, a common question that we get a lot, and I, and I run into it in the, in not only with strategic planning, but I also run into it with our meetings in the Financial Advisory Committee. Uh, and quite frankly, I think that those meetings should remain closed. Uh, we discuss a lot, and again, I'm speaking more of my experience now as a Financial Advisory Committee member. Um, we discuss a lot of things. Uh, we express some very uh, sharp opinions, if you will, uh, about various aspects of how the community is run and what we should be doing. And I think the important thing that, er, that the public should know, that the residents should know, is at the end of the day, we come to a consensus of what we think should be done. Uh, we come to a consensus on what we think should be changed. And we communicate that to the board. Uh, again, you have to understand that these committees are all advisory committees. So we talk about a wide range of topics, some of, some of which are never going to be acted on or even considered by the board. Um, and so I think what, where I do think that we need to do is that the opinions that we give, the recommendations that we give to the board should be made public. You should know what we what conclusions we have come to, what problems we think need to be addressed. But that is the board's prerogative to publicize that information. It is not our prerogative. Um, one of the other things that we have done, and I'm not sure that I'm not sure what the strategic planning committee does on this, but on the financial advisory committee, we have always allowed groups to come in and make presentations if they have opinions on a particular topic. Unfortunately, that has only occurred twice in the five-year history of the board, of the committee. Thank you, Gary. The next question, back to Bruce Horn. Bruce, the Fairfield Glade Community Club took ownership of a large number of vacant lots over the last few years when Fairfield Glade members defaulted on their dues for those lots. In addition, Cumberland County took ownership of a large number of lots because Fairfield Glade members defaulted on their county taxes. The county pays no Fairfield Glade assessments for those lots. Are you in favor of billing and collecting property owner uh, association, homeowner association fees from the county, which would also provide the county with voting rights for those lots? Or would you favor a quid pro quo of not charging fees? In, in exchange for the community not paying property taxes, with the county not obtain not obtaining voting rights, please explain your position. By virtue of the question itself, it shows the difficulty in coming to a uh, resolution on this right now. There's options just in the question. There are positions already in the questions. Part of the issue is that there was another aspect of this question that wasn't actually included. And that's the fact 
of that the state of Tennessee has a lot of to say about taxes and ownership and what happens with collecting of fees and paying of fees and the like. The issue here, I think, is that there needs to be a discussion with our partners, which is Crossville, the county, Wyndham, and Fairfield Glade, to come to a consensus after more information is available and more realistic uh, data is collected. We can come to a consensus. It may not be to uh, everyone's liking, but I believe that the majority, the vast majority of people in the county and Wyndham and particularly Fairfield Glade can be satisfied with the results as they unfold. I don't have all of the data. That's part of the reason for joining the board is because I want to know more and I want to know more what is possible. Thank you. Thank you, Bruce. The next question goes to Greg Jones. Greg, would you support the board's development of an action plan to identify methods the board can use to influence the county in expanding its financial support of our street network and increased funding contributions for our fire and police operations? This is, again, a question somewhat like what uh, was just answered by Bruce in that this is a very complex issue. Uh, it requires really understanding how the county works, it understands how it's represented, and it understands how we interact uh, with the county and the county uh, elected representatives. Now, having said that, I had the opportunity to talk to people in the fire department. I've talked to people uh, in the uh, police department. And I hear a lot about how the funding needs to be looked at. What I don't hear is a consensus on how that should be looked at. I get a lot of different opinions, and those are good. But we need really come, much as Bruce said in the other answer, we need to come together as a community and really figure out what our position really is. And that's going to require people from all of these organizations really sitting down with the board and with the advisory committees. Uh, I do believe that this is a big issue, and I do, I do believe that this is something that really has to be addressed. But like, like the previous talker, I mean, I don't have all that data yet. That's one of the reasons why I want to be on the board. So I'm not coming in with a preconceived notion that says this is the way it ought to be. Rather, what I want to do is try to get the right people together and really work through what we want and then come out with an action plan of how we can get it. Recognizing that this is going to still be a very difficult topic because of the desires that we have as a community of the things we want for ourselves as opposed to maybe what the county is willing to fund. Thank you very much. Thank you, Greg. The next question goes to John Wedgworth. John, the 2019 budget shows the police department cost Fairfield Glade Community Club members $1 million. The 2018 budget shows the police department costs Fairfield Glade Community Club members $1.4 million. Since all community club members pay taxes for the Cumberland County Sheriff, would you support a proposal to request a fair slash equitable amount of funds based on the county sheriff's budget per capita from the county for our police department based on the population of Fairfield Glade? First of all, I would like to thank Chief Williams and all the Fairfield Glade Police Department for what they do for our community on a daily basis that we don't see that they're out there for us. Um, for the last couple of years, through the Positivity Glade Network, I've had an opportunity to meet and uh, talk with a lot of newcomers to our community. And that's one of their very first things they come in is the dedication of our police department and what that means to our community here in Fairfield Glade. Uh, first, we would have, as a board member, we'll have the opportunity to review the budget when Mike uh, Chief Williams presents it to the board. Uh, we do have that ownership of that, so we will look at that. Um, I am not a, in favor of, of reaching out to the sheriff to let him take control of our police department or have anything to do with it. Um, our citizens are 100% behind our police department. And obviously, we need to look at the budget to make sure we're within guidelines and look for all other opportunities for funding. But I would not, um, I would not be in favor of that. Thank you. Thank you, John. Next question goes to Don Elliott. 
Don, are you generally satisfied with our food and beverage service? If not, what would you do to improve the quality of our food and beverage selections? Please elaborate on your opinion. Uh, thank you for that question. I think it's a great question. Uh, there has been, an, of course, a discussion about whether uh, our food and beverage operation should be self-sustaining or whether we consider it an amenity. My experience with uh, right now Stonehenge Grill, I think they're doing a terrific job with the facility that we have right now. I have reviewed the plans. The new facility that's going to be uh, constructed this fall, I think that giving the uh, chef uh, what he has asked for, I've seen increased storage area, a walk-in uh, refrigerator, I think those are very key elements of any kitchen and other brand new equipment. I look forward to, find, to seeing the uh, quality of the food coming out and the consistency improving uh, with these changes. Again, I think that it's essential that we maintain our food and beverage. The, I did review the uh, questionnaire that was given out uh, to the people. I think it's important that we maintain that. And the question is, I think the majority of our members do want the restaurants here. We have other restaurants in the area, but I think we should support our own restaurants here in Fairfield Glade. I think they're outstanding. Thank you. Thank you, Don. The next question goes to Jerry Miller. Jerry, does Fairfield Glade need its own volunteer fire department? If yes, why? If not, would you support replacing our own fire department with service from the county? And if so, on what basis? I don't think the question is so much need our own volunteer fire department. I think it, that's what we want our own fire department. It's the best group of dedicated people I think I've ever met. I've got to know many of them, including the chief. They work so hard, and they're part of our community. And I think that having a volunteer fire department is far superior than demand the county or to do to, to our fire work. I think, though, what we need to do is look at their funding. They have been funded about $120,000 a year for the last five, six, seven years, never increased. <clears throat> they have to make a budget presentation every year. We end up giving 92 cents out of our dues to our present fire department. We just have to find a different formula to make funding a little more dependable for them year in and year out. They raise all the capital money by themselves. We don't even cover their expenses. We just have to do a better job for our dedicated fire fighters in this community. Thank you. Thank you, Jerry. The last question goes to Gary Fitch. Gary, considering the recent and probably well into 2021 negative impact of the coronavirus upon the community club's finances, explain your position regarding financing the hundreds of thousands of dollars proposed to be spent on the Stonehenge Clubhouse, the Racket Center, Robin Hood Park, and other amenities. Well, I think it's a very simple explanation, really. Um, you know, one of the one of the things that some of uh, my opponents here have said was that they want to maintain property values. Well, the best way for us to maintain property values is to keep improving and renovating our amenities. Okay, and that pro and that process doesn't stop just because we have a temporary funding problem. Okay. Uh, and that's one of the things that, you know, when people come to look, to come here and look at this as a place to retire, they don't come and look at my house or your house. They come and they look at the golf courses. They look at the tennis courts. They look at the pools. Okay. And, you know, if, if the golf courses aren't mowed and there are cracks in the tennis courts and there's algae in the pools, those people are not going to buy a house here. Okay. And so I think it's a very simple thing. We cannot afford to let our amenities go just because we've got a problem. I mean, we can survive this problem. And in fact, we actually are, I think we're doing a fairly good job now. We've made, we've, we've cut back on staff where it's appropriate. Uh, labor is our biggest expense. And so we've cut back staff. We've, we've, re, we've eliminated or 
deferred expenses that are that are discretionary. We spend money when we have to, but, the, but that's something that we really cannot afford to do, and it's something that, quite frankly, why we are in the situation that we're in now with so many old buildings is because in the past, boards have done exactly that. They've skimped on renovating and replacing facilities when they needed to be done. And so I don't want to fall into that trap again. Thank you, Gary. We're nearing the end of our program with closing remarks. Once again, the order of appearance for the candidates' closing remarks was determined in a drawing by the candidates prior to the commencement of this program. Each candidate will be allowed three minutes to deliver closing remarks. We'll start with Don Elliott. Don? Thank you. I just want to thank the uh, election committee, uh, my fellow candidates, for uh, participating in this. It's an honor to be able to do this. I just would like to say that uh, I have always been a dedicated person to anything that I say I'm going to do. I promise that if I'm elected, I will represent all our members, partners, and everybody associated with Fairfield Glade. I do support the fire department, our police department, which has done a terrific job. I couldn't imagine our community without either a fire department or a police department. I know at any given evening, there are four sheriff's deputies on patrol in Cumberland County, 625 square miles. I can't imagine what the response time might be. It, I shudder to think what would happen if we dissolved our police department or fire department. The county would probably give us only one fire engine right now. We have terrific equipment. It just gives me goosebumps to think about what might happen if those services weren't here in the Glade. I promise to support all, all of our amenities and our organization of Fairfield Glade. I think our board, our committees, Wyndham, Wyndham gives us over a million and a half dollars a year. They pay double the amenities fees that we do. I think they're dedicated partners and I support them. Thank you at all for allowing me this great opportunity. Thank you, Don. Next up is Jerry Miller. Jerry? First, I want to thank the election committee, Bill Booth, and our staff member over there who's been helping uh, put on such a professional event in difficult times. I think it's the uh, best they could do in the times, and I appreciate the effort of everyone involved. I pretty much covered everything <clears throat> in my opening statement. But in short, I want to be an advocate, and I feel strongly that I can be an effective in that role. I will be your sounding board. I will listen to you and respond to you. I will meet and talk with you. I have stated my position on key issues of interest and concern in four weekly articles in the VISTA. Whether you like my positions or not, at least they were publicly revealed for all to read and understand. I am confident in my ability to be a contributing member of our board. I've been deeply involved in our community for such a long time. Professionally, I have 40 years of human resources management experience at the most senior of levels. I hold BBA and MBA degrees from the University of Michigan and a law degree from the Detroit College of Law. I want to expand a little bit on the question I was asked uh, by the group uh, on the voting participation. As I said, we cannot stress too strongly the need for everyone to vote. A 50% participation rate has allowed the powerful Wyndham voting bloc to decide the outcome of six of our last eight elections. With six of us running, they will do it again, unless we vote significantly greater numbers than 50%. It's so easy. We don't even have to leave our homes to vote. Let's take our elections back. Let's determine our own destiny. Finally, I want your vote. I need your vote. If elected, I promise to do what I've said I will do. I can't do any more than that. Thank you. Thank you, Jerry. Next, we'll hear from Gary Fitch. Gary? Um, I'm struck by, as I sit here and listen to uh, other people's responses to questions, I'm struck by a lot of us agree, I think, on a lot of the questions. Uh, for example, I agree with Bruce on, on the need to allow the VISTA be distributed. Um, and I agree with some of the other things. I disagree with some of them. But that's 
that's what you should expect. I mean, if if we were all in agreement on everything, uh, what why would we need we why would he even need to have an election? Okay. Um, but I think what I want to spend some time is exactly what Jerry was talking about just now, and that's the need for you, our residents, to get out and vote. Uh, Jerry mentioned that, that less than 50% of our residents vote, which to me is just utterly um, not logical. Okay? I mean, you're here, you, you can vote. We have over 5,000 homes here in the Glade, which means that we have at least 5,000 votes for people that are right here, okay? Wyndham only has 1,300 votes. So we have about four times the number of votes that Wyndham has if you get out and vote. And that also applies to the county elections, okay? We, we have residents in both District 9 and District 6. Okay, you have a responsibility as a citizen. We've had a lot of discussion, a lot of things in the paper about why we're not getting our fair share of tax money from the county. Well, if you get out and you support candidates for the county board who agree with your position, then we're going to get more funds. Okay, but again, it's up to you. If you don't vote, it doesn't happen. So. It's up to you at this point. I think we've got a group of good candidates here. I don't think you can go wrong voting for any two of us. I'd like it if you vote for me, but I can live with it if you don't. Thank you. Thank you, Gary. Next, we'll hear from Greg Jones. Greg? Thank you. I first of all want to also give my thanks to the Election Committee for getting this all set up. I know we had some issues with it for a few days, and we've had a lot of fun with that. But uh, we're marching on, and thank you for all your hard work for getting this all together. I also want to thank all of you for taking the time to listen. This is an important vote. You do have a say, and this is how you get to understand what you're going to get, as any of us would make the, uh, the uh, uh, move into the board position. There are a couple things I want to cover, though, uh, and they were embedded with a couple of questions that others got that I didn't, but I want to make some statements about them. The question around the VISTA, to me, is really a larger question. It's really getting at how opinions and how people's thinking and how people's desires are get are got, gotten to the board and to the staff of Fairfield Glade. Opinions don't scare me. Matter of fact, I encourage them. I want to hear what you have to say. This is not my community. It's our community. And it really is going to take all of us to really get our opinions heard and then sort through all of that and find out what we want to do as an overall community. So for me, things like the VISTA being distributed, for me, like openness as committees, are critical kinds of activities because I truly believe if we don't have that openness and dialogue and communication, then we really, really are missing out on some things. I did spend a lot of time with the fire department, and I want to tell you that, that I'm in agreement with uh, the person that answered that question. I think we really need to get to some, some decision about what the minimum requirement will be uh, as a contribution so people can plan on a long-term basis. Now, I don't have any preconceived notion about the 120000 if that's right or wrong, good or bad. But I do think what we need to sit down with the board of the Fairfield Glade Fire Department, along with their leadership, our leadership, and our board, and come to some conclusions about how that's going to work. The other thing is, is that I really want to spend a little bit of time on the amenities. To me, we call them subsidy. I think that's an incorrect term. I know the accounting reasons. I've got strong accounting skills, so I understand that. But really, they're investments. Just as somebody said, if you want to talk about house values, or home values or property values, this is how we get them. We have to fund these amenities and we have to fund these services because they're expected of the people that are coming in. As a matter of fact, one of the things I think we really need to do is really start thinking through about what the future residents coming in here are going to want to expect when they come here because it's not going to necessarily be the same. Finally, if you go to my website, you'll see a, a t statement, a slogan that I have, no group left behind. And I really mean that. In every project I ran for the last 30 years, that's been my mantra. That doesn't mean you're going to agree with every decision. It doesn't mean that you're going to love every decision. But it does mean you're going to get an opportunity to participate, 
hear, have your voice heard, and really get involved with the solution making. Thank you very much. Thank you, Greg. Finally, we will hear from John Wedgworth. John? Thank you. Um, thank you, Fairfield Glade residents, for watching this presentation. I appreciate taking the time to engage in this unique candidates forum, and I'm grateful for this pre-election opportunity to engage with our residents. It is a brief but important time for us to meet and for us to listen to your concerns and respond to your answers. In my previous career with Maytech Corporation, we had a popper call to action with our sales team. Find someone doing something good. In my engagement within the Fairfield Glade community, I have served many individuals doing something good. Residents, employees of Fairfield Glade alike who serve us all and live this action, call to action, every day. It is and always be my personal aspiration to be a friend, a neighbor, a spouse, and hopefully a Fairfield Glade Board of Director member who has seen as someone sincerely and carefully doing something good. Neighbors and fellow residents, I'm qualified, I'm a communicator and a bridge builder. I'm ready to bring fresh views and energetic leadership to serve you as a member of the Fairfield Glade Board of Directors. It will always make it my priority to be a calm voice of reason to do what is fair in the best interest of all residents. Please take a moment to review my website. Here's the contact information. If you have any additional questions, feel free to call me or email me. And also in closing, I would like to thank so many of my friends and neighbors here who's helped me with this campaign in Fairfield Way. It would not be possible to do it without your help and support. Thank you. And also a special thanks to my wife, Beth, who has helped me through this process and is my strength. Thank you, Beth. Thank you, thank you John. Thank you, John. Uh, next we will hear, and finally we will hear from Bruce Horn. Thank you. Uh, I reiterate the same feelings from everybody that thank you so much for your hard work in putting this together and thank my colleagues for being here and discussing these things. One of the uh, issues that I've heard this morning or quite often was the a lot of things about wants and needs. Well, these are from the, the community and as well as the rest of us candidates. I'd like to examine that for just a moment because we we want things like increased property values. For that, we need a vibrant, welcoming, growing community. We want a healthy community environment. We want all of those things. For that, we need things like clean water, efficient, modern sanitation services, as well as the amenities and health aspects of hiking trails, the wellness center, sports opportunities, more. We want a safe and secure community. For that, we need a competent and modern police and fire department. We have several wants. All of these require a balance of the need and then the how and the when. Using the example, say, of, of increased property value. To satisfy that need, the attributes for growth, is by investing in, that's how now, by investing in our amenities, our infrastructure, our relationships with our partners, which is Wyndham, Crossville, the county, we all have to work together. The when is fairly straightforward. That's continuously. The responsibility is with all of us, with leadership by the board. Let's take the example of fire and police. This seems to be, to me, a case where the want and the need are come together. Again, we're talking now about the how and the when to get there. It is a complex question, and the board of directors are elected by us as representatives of our community to do that in conjunction with our partners. Not any of this is an easy exercise. Not many choose to take on these tasks. I can guarantee you that not everyone will be pleased with the decisions made. However, most of us will be satisfied and benefit from the results of these deliberations because they are made with the best interest of our community in mind, our community, one community. 
In closing, I would appreciate your vote. Thank you. Thank you, Bruce. We'd like to express our appreciation for all of the candidates for their willingness to serve on our Board of Directors and their participation in this program. Ballots for members in good standing will be emailed or mailed based on your preference the week of August the 10th. Voters will use either the web link provided in the email or the provided manual ballot and pre-addressed envelope to cast their votes and return their ballot to the independent tabulating agency not later than September 4th. The results of the election for the two property owner directors at large positions will be announced at the annual membership meeting scheduled for September 18th, 2020 at 10 a.m. in the Community and Conference Center. The Fairfield Glade website offers a great deal of information regarding these candidates. As community club members, each of us has the responsibility to do our homework, research the candidates' positions on topics that concern us, and then cast our ballot. Your vote is important because the future of Fairfield Glade depends on it. This concludes our program. We appreciate your attention, and we hope that you have found this program informative. Stay safe out there.